Hi guys, it's Kelly here. I'm back with another video sponsored by Simon Says Stamp. Today we're going to be using a lot of Simon products, the Script Thanks, the Frond Collage, and then this, um, we're jumping right into the Copa coloring. This um, watercolor is one of Susie's paintables from the Mother's Father's Florals release. And I really loved both of the images. You'll see that flower is already colored there. That's going to be a separate video. Today we're just doing the bird. Um, but I really, really loved this image. And I thought that um, even though Mother's Day, Father's Day, all that stuff is over, these images are still so pretty and can still be used. So I decided to actually make two separate cards with them. So here you can see I'm using a bunch of cool grays to shade my hummingbird. Um, I can't even remember when the last time I colored a hummingbird. I didn't like the way it came out. I think I did it with Zig Clean Colors. Um, no surprise, I'm much more comfortable with my Copics. So when I was looking at, because uh, I have no idea what hummingbirds look like. I mean, outside of the fact that their throats are usually um, very beautifully colored. Um, I had no idea what the rest of them looked like. I mean, they're just birds in my head. Um, so I googled them and I would recommend anything that you're not 100% comfortable with what they look like. Um, like if you're, you know, coloring a beagle and you own a beagle, you probably know what a beagle looks like. But anything else, maybe google it and get a good idea. So the picture that I settled on actually was a mostly gray or um, black bird that had these beautiful colors um, on its head and throat. And so that's what I'm trying to mimic here. So I'm adding shading to the left hand side because that's just my preference. I usually color as if my light source is in the top right when I'm coloring with a light source. And I'm just using, um, really adding those shadows to the, just the lines on the wings to give myself some dimension. I wanted his belly to be lighter. And so as I went out to the darkest color, now I'm going in back toward the lightest and blending everything out. Um, I didn't want the top of his wing to be super dark, even though it is, um, you know, that dark gray or black, because I didn't want it to get muddy and kind of blend into each other. And I am also adding just a little bit of shading underneath his um, beak there. Again, blending um, just those colors back out toward the lightest colors. This is the um, C3 I'm working with. And this is gonna be um, the whole wing I pretty much colored in with the C3 because I really want that belly to be very white. I didn't cover all of the belly, just went over the gray enough to um, have it blend. So now, I did not because I did these, I did the coloring at the same time. So you'll see up in the top left hand corner, um, there is the color of the marker. I'm not going to do this for everyone because let me tell y'all, it was time consuming. So any video that you see where they have those annotations there every single time, God bless those people. Be very grateful for those people because they've spent a lot of time putting in those annotations. I'm not doing it. Um, typically I show you guys the markers at the beginning and then feel free to pause it. But anyway, to add the texture, the last time I did this, I had a really hard time getting any texture with the Zigling color markers. And so this time I decided I was going to add the color using stippling um, to kind of mimic those look of the, the feathers that lay on top of each other. And I actually really liked the way that this turned out. So yay, winning. I picked um, the yellow green family to do, at the time I was trying to make them kind of matchy matchy because you know, me and cards, they have to be kind of matchy matchy if I'm having two cards. Um, it's just the, the plight of being me, I guess. Um, but so I did the, the dots, which that's what stippling is. It's just little dots um, and you get lighter. The dots are less concentrated. The lighter the color is, they're more concentrated, the darker the color is. So I picked the um, YGs and then uh, the Bs, which are more on the um, bluish green side. They're not like a true blue, which is the same color as the flower because I knew they'd blend in really well to, with each other and they would kind of pop off of um, the bird. So doing that, just go, continually going over them so that they blend. Copics are, you've heard me say this a hundred times. I feel, do you guys ever get sick of hearing me say the same things? Um, but I feel like if you're, this is the first video you're ever watching, I don't want you to not understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, they're transparent. So if you put lighter colors over darker colors, it's going to lift that. So it will give you kind of like a third new color. I also went over um, and did the stippling with the C1 
so that everything blended together. I did not feel like my bird was dark enough. I didn't feel like I had enough contrast. So I went back and got a C9 and then I'm just playing up kind of the darkest areas with that C9, really getting in between um, the the feathers, the the way that his wings are drawn. And then I'm going to blend that out with the C7 uh, just so it matches. But I really feel like that contrast kind of like bumps it up a notch. Shockingly, I do own colored pencils. Um, I do own them. I very rarely use them. The reason I very rarely use them is because um, it's just not a medium I'm comfortable with. However, sometimes they can be very, very helpful in adding details. And so to just kind of add in some more dimension into the stippling, I took a navy blue colored pencil and added that on top of what I already had. And then I went in with a white and did the same thing. The white actually was um, really kind of awesome because it kind of gave like some shininess and some blendedness. Um, blendedness, I think I just made that word up. But anyway, um, that wasn't there before. Then I went in and added some highlights on the tip of his wings, on top of his beak, um, just with the, the white colored pencil. I didn't trust myself to get in that little teeny tiny eye with the colored pencil, so I did use my white gel pen. And then you see me outlining the flower here because, like I said, I did these all at, in one fail swoop. So um, I um, I did outline the bird as well. I cut everything out. Uh, I fussy cut it, and then I ran these through my die cuts. So I cut out the um, the thanks. This is everything to make both of the cards. I really was very nervous about my background because it was also going to be blue and green. So I was afraid my little bird wouldn't stand out enough. So I decided to go back in with some colors I knew would blend. On top of the yellow green, I went in with some yellow to kind of change that color up a little bit. And then on top of the blue, I went in with some RVs, an RV02 and an RV04. Um, I did not have any issue going over that colored pencil. It kind of resisted the color, which was really pretty cool. And I think maybe like that would be fun to do some other techniques with. Um, but I did that just to give it some extra color so it would stand out from the background. We're going to do the background now so you'll see what I mean. I just have a plain, I'm working on uh, Nina 80 pound solar white cardstock and I'm using Distress Oxides. So I started with Salty Ocean. I'm not, you'll see, this is not like super blended. It's kind of a little bit of a hot mess. Um, I'm not trying very hard. <laughs> I'm not trying very hard to blend them because it is a background. The bird's going to be the focal point. Plus I'm going to have that beautiful, um, beautiful, what? Beautiful. It's beautiful, people. Um, die cut. I, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, uh, the beautiful uh, collage die cut, the, the leaves that are going to go around it. So I don't really need it to be super blended out. It's going to be fine if it's a little splotchy. I have this stamp set, which is actually from Concord and Ninth, and it is the Flourish stamp set, and it had really great leaves in it. I already knew I was going to be um, using the friend, the small friend in my other card. So it was already on my desk. It was very easy to just pick up and use. And because Distress Oxides um, are partially pigment inks, you can stamp with them and get really great results versus regular Distress inks where everything was just kind of splotchy and never smoothed out. These are gorgeous to stamp with. Um, so I'd stamp some leaves in the background and then you can see how that blending totally doesn't even matter because you have these gorgeous layers of the leaves and then the sentiment. And so now we're going to start putting everything together. I flipped over my um, top die cut piece and I'm going to adhere that with some scotch foam tape. I have the big mama roll, the huge roll, because I need all the foam tapes. I need all the everything. If you don't, if you watch my channel, you know this. I need all of the everythings. I have full set syndrome, bad. Um, but anyway, so I added that with some scotch foam tape after I trimmed down the pieces. Now you'll notice that I did put some small pieces on the little leaves and you're probably thinking to yourself, Kelly, there's that those aren't holding that there. You're correct. They're really just stabilizing pieces um, so that everything, it doesn't sink in the mail. That's really what those little teeny tiny pieces are for. I know that they're not really helping my card stay together. For the bird, I put a little bit of Tombow Monomalte glue on his tail, and then I put the rest of him on foam tape. I'm going to tuck his tail underneath one of those little leaves so it looks like he's kind of flying out, and then the rest of him will be popped up and everything will be level. 
I'm gonna glue the there the thanks the script thanks cuts two pieces there's two different dies so there's their actual word and then there's an outline which I love I love having um, the variety to China just do them differently so I adhered that down with the Tembo Mono Multi Glue and then I'm going to use um, the same type of adhesive to go ahead and adhere it onto my card so the little thanks, I was recently gifted um, some beautiful cards in the mail and also a stamp set from my friends Barb and Jill, and I wanted to send them little thank you cards. So that's what these are for. I put some clear Wink Estella on that bird, and then I'm going to use this. This is a new product for me. It's um, Nuvo. I think it's the Crystal Glaze, um, and they are. They're Crystal Glaze droplets, and here you can see um, both cards. We're going to do the flower tomorrow, so come back if you're watching on YouTube or on my blog. Come back tomorrow. We're going to do the flower tomorrow. It was just too long to put them together. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you guys uh, learned a little bit of something, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.